Hey, Bruce here on behalf of Northside Aquatics in Elkhart, Indiana. Today I'm going to do a real simple video. Uh, if adults, you already know about this, well, maybe you can share this with kids or somebody new to the hobby. We're going to be talking about the nitrogen cycle briefly, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of why water changes are the key to success in this hobby. All right, folks, so first of all, you start out with fish, and what do they do? Well, they poop. <laughs> all right, so in addition to that, um, the other things that go into the water are what? Well, the answer to that is fish food. So you get fish food and fish poop, and then what's called good bacteria, the first kind, breaks that stuff down into what are called nitrites. And nitrites are all over in your tank, okay? They're not just sitting on the bottom like the poop was. They're floating all over in the, in the water, the top, the bottom, going through your filter. Nitrites are all over the place. So what happens after that? Well, quite simply, another good bacteria comes along. We'll call that good bacteria too. And that breaks the nitrites down into what is called nitrates. And now here's where you start getting into trouble. Nitrates are bad for your fish. These are the things that they're always telling you you need to change your water because you need to get rid of the nitrates. Again, as I was telling you, ammonia breaks down into nitrites. The nitrites are broken down into nitrates. And all of this stuff is floating around in the water in microscopic uh, bits that you can't see. Uh, well, you might be able to see it a little bit in the form of cloudiness or other things, but it's bad for your fish. It's literally poison. It needs to be gotten out of there. There's only a couple ways to get nitrates out. First of all, plants will take it out. Uh, so if you have live plants in your tank, that's very good. But the problem with it is most of us don't have enough plants in there to completely take out the nitrates and get them down to a really low level unless we have a very, very small amount of fish and there's just not that much ammonia being created. So now to make this visual for you, I am going to show you this glass that I'm using as my refill water. This is going to be my aquarium, and then this is going to be uh, nitrates, okay, to show you what I'm talking about. So you start out at the beginning of the week, everything's pretty clean, your fish start pooping and peeing, and you start adding food, and this is what you get at the end of the week, okay. After your tank builds up good bacteria and you have nitrates in there, then you have to start uh, keeping up with your water changes with the goal in mind being a balance. All right, so now I'm going to add my fresh water. And as you can see, it's still a little bit discolored. So what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to maybe slow down a little on my feeding so that I'm not overfeeding. I might uh, have to rethink how many fish I have in there. But the goal is to have less nitrogen not, I'm sorry, nitrates build up in the uh, tank so that at the end of the week when I go and I do my water change, sometimes you play around with it. Sometimes you do a 30%, sometimes a 40 sometimes a 50% water change. But the goal, obviously, is that your water is nice and clean with low nitrates at the beginning of the week and that as things build up, the nitrates are still relatively low when you go to change your water at the end of the week. And again, it's a balancing act, folk, uh, folks. So uh, like I said, sometimes people get really excited and get just tons and tons of fish. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, but you just have to be prepared because you need to make sure you're putting uh, water back in there that is very similar in temperature. And then you also want to make sure that... Um, you're using dechlorinating chemicals or conditioners if you have uh, bad water um, because you do not want to make a you know 50 60 70 percent water change and shock your fish so ideally a lot of people like to get to the point where they're doing a 30 or 40 or 50 percent uh, water change uh, here's a quick look at me oh there's my dog loki <laughs> and uh i'm walking my uh my fish room here and it just depends. I've got a couple of tanks in other areas too, but this kind of gives you a general idea of my setup where I've got uh, water I can put in uh, while at the same time removing uh, water from the opposite end of the tank. Um, and I do this 
uh, one time a week on Sundays, I do a 30 to 40% change. And then on Wednesdays, I do about a 10% change, uh, particularly on tanks when I'm doing, uh, when I have things breeding, which in uh, a lot of those tanks right now, there's all kinds of fancy plecos breeding. So just wanted you to take a look at that. Uh, that's my setup. Uh, so it's extremely important. Hope you learned a little something and hope that visible uh, coffee demo helped you out. And keep in mind, folks, this is freshwater. These are freshwater fish I was working on there. Uh, that's what I raised. But if you have questions on saltwater fish uh, or just questions about anything, different chemicals to use with your water changes and stuff, hey, here's the folks to call Northside Aquatics in Elkhart. Thanks so much for your time.